Hello. Hey, everyone. This is Robin from Center Street Decor, SVGs and more, where I make SVG files for your Glowforge and laser printers. I love designing, so I love to make all the files. So we are celebrating summer with the files right now. And if you are just hopping on and watching the replay, say hi. Let me know you're here. It, I would love to hear from you. So today, or back up, yesterday we painted beads. And I kind of walked you through how we painted beads. So we painted a lot of beads. And um, so if you didn't catch that live, go ahead and go back and, and watch that. See how I painted all these beads. beads. It was really easy. Really easy to do and fun. Um, so today what we wanna do is we are working on our beehive, um, our beehive tags for our garlands. The tags for the garlands. Beaded garland, beaded garland tags, beaded garland tags. That's what we'll call it. So let me just show you. Um, this is one of them, and there's three. There's three tags in this SVG file. So this is one of the tags. Uh, just be kind. So I went ahead and painted this one yesterday and I turned it into a garland with some with some of those beads that we painted. I also made some garlands. Or gar uh, sorry, I gotta get all my words right. This is the tag. This is the garland. This is the tassel. Okay. The tag, the tags are the SVG file that are in the shop. And then I put it together on the garland, the beaded garland. <laughs> Sorry, all my words are so mixed up. And then this is the tassel. Now the tassel, um, I will make one in just a little bit after we paint um, one of our, one more of our three pieces. So this is the piece. This is one of the pieces, just be kind. And then here is another really cute one. So this is a honey pot and it also has the honey dipper stick. So I actually attached that to be part of the garland and it lays right over the honey pot. It's so cute, you guys. And these are some of the beads that I painted yesterday. And then we have our tassel. So I'm gonna tip you down and I'll show these to you. And then I'll show you what we are going to paint. Okay, let's tip you down. I'll try not to make everybody dizzy. Try to get you a little bit close so that you can, you can see. And then I can still see comments right now with my phone. Okay. So this is the be kind, and then this is the honey pot with the honey dipper stick. It's so cute, you guys, I just love it. So we're gonna set these aside. So um, like I said, this SVG file comes as a set of three. So this is one set, this is, or this is one, two, and then these two pieces are the third one. Okay, let's set these aside. I gotta get all my terminology right for my beaded garlands. The tag, the garland, and the tassel. Okay, so this is what we're gonna work on today. And I have got my little, um, let's see if I still have some of those little, inner pieces. Well, we'll just go ahead and use these. That'll be okay. I have some that are, this is, this one is actually been cut out of wood, um, but I have some that have been cut out of the, the MDF. And I really like to paint on MDF. Let me see if I still have them here in my tray. Okay, I do. So 
So we'll just go ahead and put these on our tape for now because I'll just use the ones that I cut out, the MDF. And we might not use all of these pieces to go on the inside. Let me get my little readers on. I am a fan of little readers and I have a ton and all different colors and well, I was going to say all different sizes, but they're really not different sizes. So let's go ahead and start. I'll show you the pieces. So it's the honey. We have got the beehive and the beehive has a honeycomb and then a little tiny bee that will go on the honeycomb. And you can use all of these pieces or not, just maybe just use a bee or and use the honeycomb. And then we have this, this one says fresh honey. And these pieces and the little letters come off. So we will paint the background. I'm gonna get some tape to puff on here. That just makes it easy. Easy to have them not sliding around on my table. Okay, here's our honey word. And then we have the word fresh. Okay, I haven't decided exactly what colors I'm gonna paint what yet. So we will figure that out together, you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on, I know that I, I think I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do the background in an ivory and then I'll do the honey pot um, just like I did with our, um, with our cute chunky our chunky beehives, I think I'll do it really similar to that. And then they'll all coordinate together because there'll be similar colors. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's see, make sure I'm in frame. I'm gonna use, um, this is just antique parchment. It's just a an ivory color that I will use. Let's see, I'm gonna need, some more sponges. So these are the makeup sponges that I like to use. Wonder Wedge. Um, and so I just keep the big bag right next to me. And I also really utilize these sponges, especially when I'm working in a small area, I will cut them into quarters. So I'll just cut this into four pieces. And then we'll be using those. I'll go ahead and cut another one because we'll probably need more as I start painting these others. Okay, set some of these aside. So if you, you can see on this, there are some engraved words on here. Um, so, oh, sorry, they're not engraved, they are scored. So I want to be able to see some of this honeycomb. I'm not so worried about the words because my letters are gonna cover it, but it just really helps with placement and that's nice. So let's go ahead. And so I tap into my paint and then I tap off. So either on your paper towel or whatever you're using. So this doesn't have a whole lot of paint to start with. So then I'm just gonna kind of tap very gently over our, um, our tag. very lightly. I still want to see that honeycomb. And after I get a little bit of a coat, sometimes I just, I'm just very gently running my sponge over. 
And if you get any paint inside of your engraved area that you don't want, you can just use um, a needle or a pen. I have this poker tool and I'm just gonna go and scrape some of those areas where I got a little bit of paint in. Just on these edges as well. And it's okay if you don't clean them out. You can clean them out or not. It's totally up to you. Okay. So I obviously had a little extra paint on my um, sponge. So, and when you push too firmly, then it squishes into those areas. So on this one, I'm not worried about getting paint on these lines right here. We're gonna use our essential gold. This is a Valspar paint. I probably should shake it up. So I don't just get the, so I don't get just the clear. Sometimes it separates a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna cut paint with the essential gold, I'm going to paint my little bee body, and then I'm going to paint my beehive. So let's go ahead and just paint our little bee body. So if you, um, the difference that I find when I'm painting on MDF and wood, MDF really sucks up the paint. It just, so I will probably have to do three coats on here. I still just like the look of the MD MDF. It's a lot smoother than wood, but there are times I also like to use wood, especially if I'm trying to get a, um, if I like, if I have a frame and I want it to have that framed look, then I really like to use wood. But everybody kind of has their preference. Everybody kind of does what they like to do. And I am totally good with that. Okay, let's go ahead and we're, I've got kind of a big brush here, a big flat brush, and I'll remove some of that water. I like to use a little bit of water when I paint. I have white in here from yesterday. I don't leave my paint brushes in here all night, but I might leave them just laying off to the side like that. <clears throat> so I'll get some of that paint, just push it on my paper towel and then pick it up. And then I'm just gonna just brush it on. So I'm just gonna go kind of from the inside to the outside so I don't get too much of the paint on the edge, the outside edge. Okay, so we'll let that dry and it won't take much time to dry. But while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and paint our little door and we're gonna do that in black. I still have my, I still have paint in my black bottle. I was telling you, I'm, I'm running very low and I shouldn't shake this black bottle. This happened to me. This has happened to me before. It just gets really splattery and just kind of goes everywhere. And that's why I wear an apron. Do you guys wear an apron when you paint? If I don't, I end up getting paint 
on my shirt everywhere. Okay. Let's pick up my black and I'm just going to paint. Just give it a quick paint. Okay. Now that this is already dry, we're going to give it another coat. And I probably will have to do, I probably will have to do three coats on this. So tap really lightly, especially around that honeycomb area. That first coat that I do when I swiped it, sometimes I do that. I swipe it, but then the next layers that I'll put on, I will just pat. Just pat, pat, pat. to be careful not to push it too firmly around that where that honeycomb is. A lot of times when I go in and pick up more paint, I'll just tap in this area where I have tapped before instead of grabbing the big glob of paint. So that's, that helps me so I don't get too much. Okay, we're gonna set this aside again. With MDF, it dries really, really quick. And so this is already dry. And the black is almost dry too. I had a lot of water on my paintbrush, so I just tap a little bit more off. There is a fuzzy in there. It's probably from um, the jute twine that I use sometimes when I use the jute twine, and that's what I used for my garland this jute twine. Sometimes there's pieces that get, get around your paint area. Okay, so once I have it basically on there, then I'm just gonna just wrap it across just to smooth it out. And our black is dry, so we'll come to that. Pick that paint up again and just brush it on there. Okay. This is going to need a few more seconds. Oh, I don't want to forget about my little bee down here, right? My little bee body. I just do the body in the yellow and then I'll come back and paint his little black stripes on him. Okay, so while everything is drying, um, I will probably be doing, I will probably paint these in the gold. This will be gold. And then these are going to be more yellow. So they're a little bit bright, just like I did on my, on my beehive. So I painted the base of a more of a gold color. And then the honeycomb yellow. And I actually put some of those little pieces back in. So you might, excuse me, you might want to save some of those little teeny pieces, which are right here. Oh, you can't see because the honeycomb was in the way. These little pieces I save, and I don't save all of them, just a few of them. 
so I can put inside inside that honeycomb. Okay, so we're going to get one of our little sponges that we cut. Pick up the gold. And then I'm just going to tap on the honey. The word honey. And then also the word fresh. Okay, this is going to need a few coats as well. Oh, let's do our, our honeycomb. Oh, I want to do it yellow. I almost went gold on that, but I want to do the yellow. So I just have the yellow paint. This is just cadmium yellow, but any bright yellow that you have on hand will do just fine. So another my, one of my little sponges I'm just going to tap on here and I didn't tap for complete full coverage on my beehive I don't know if you can see the difference I'm going to hold this up so on the pieces I inserted I want those a deep yellow I want those as yellow as I can but on the outside honeycomb I didn't you might see a few sparse little pieces in there I even went, tapped a little bit of brown on here, and I'll, I'll show you how I do that. I tapped a little bit of brown, and then I came back in with the yellow, so it, it's not a solid yellow, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to use my nutmeg brown, and I will put a little bit of nutmeg brown on our honeycomb piece. And we'll also use we'll also use this for our shading color when we get to shade our honeycomb. Okay, let's paint his little body. So the fun thing about um, painting all these little pieces, you, you can jump back and forth between pieces because they dry really quickly. Just painting his little body and that is all. That's the third coat and that's all I'll do on him. Three coats. Let's come back to our words. This tapping, tapping, tapping. Okay. I'm going to tap gently on the little pieces that are going to go in. I don't want to tap too firmly or then it squishes down the sides. And I want to try to, um, well, I guess it doesn't really matter with these because these are going to be inserted inside that honeycomb shape. But I still don't want to squish it too firmly. Okay, so I actually, with my little honeycomb piece here, I take a little bit of brown and I just use the same sponge that I used, the same yellow, and I'm just going to tap gently on here just to give it a little bit of brown. And then once that dry, I'm going to go over again with the yellow. to get more yellow so I can do these again. And these will probably need three coats as well. 
Okay, let's go ahead and paint our beehive again. Okay, that looks pretty good. And usually when I paint with black, I don't usually need to do two coats. So we, that is good. The little door is good. We do need to do another coat on here. One more of the, the cream or the white ivory color. Just tap, 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 tap. I see a fuzzy in there. I got it. Got it, you guys. <laughs> Okay, that looks great. That looks great. Let's come back. Our fresh still looks wet. The honey is dry. So we're going to go over that one more time. Let's go over. Our little teeny rounds, our little teeny honeycomb inserts. Okay, now this is when I'm going to go ahead and go over. I think I've got some brown on there. We're going to go over this. You can see how it looks like pretty yellow and brown. So now I want to make it more yellow, but I still want some of that brown to poke through. So I'm just going to tap. Okay, might be kind of hard to see, but you can see just a little bit of the brown, and that's what I want. That's kind of the look I'm going for. Not a solid yellow, but a little bit of that brown. Okay, so those are finished, and we need to do another coat on the fresh, but it needs to dry a little bit. Got heavy handed. Okay, this needs a little drying time, and this we're done with except for the shading. Let's go ahead and paint our little black stripes on our little bee. So the very, very bottom piece and the very top piece, which is his head. So I just did his little stinger. Now I'll just do his little head. And it has those scored lines, so you can kind of, or you can, you can actually see where you need to go, where you need to paint. If you go a little bit outside the lines, don't worry, don't worry about it. He's a look, he is really cute. Doesn't have to be perfect. Because he's going to be cute, no matter how you do it. Little tiny, tiny, tiny bee. Okay, let's let him dry. Might need to grab the heat tool just to dry these things. Oh, we can do we can do our fresh again. So this is the last time 
with the word fresh. Okay, I better sneeze. Oh, excuse me. I usually sneeze three times, but just once that time. Okay, I am going to grab my heat tool just to add, just to dry this a little bit. I'm going to do one more coat on here. It doesn't look like a full coverage, so I'm just going to do one more. Make sure I don't have any water on my paintbrush. Just want to pick up just all paint. And this will be the last coat on this one. Usually the, the lighter the color, the more coats you have to do. if it's dark like that black little door it only needed two so Okay. Okay, I'm looking at my little B and I don't think I need to do any more. I don't need to do another coat. I think that black is covering just fine, but we need to do his little wings. So when we're gonna do the ivory, ivory color just flip him over and if you have paint pens and you like to use paint pens they actually work great so if you think oh i can't paint that little teeny tiny bee feel free to use paint pens they work great okay so these two items need to dry <coughs> and then let's go ahead and give some shading so we're going to use our brown right here and i like to use an angled brush so this is an angled brush. And I just tap some of that water out. And if you've watched some of my videos, you've watched me do a lot of this shading. But I like to do it on my items. So I just tip, if you haven't seen me do shading, I just tip the corner and it's hard to tell because we've got a brown paintbrush. The bristles are brown and then I'm dipping in brown. But then I just run just kind of over and over again. And you can see how it kind of becomes like a little bit of an ombre look. Some of that water blends it and that's what we want. So then I just take that corner and then I'm just brushing it on the edge and then I just pull it, just pull the color around. And then I keep going until I feel like the paint color has run out. And so right now it's not looking very good. So we're going to rinse the brush. 
tap some of the water out. We do want some water in our paintbrush because that's what helps the paint flow. So again, the corner gets to in there and then we're just gonna just wipe it back and forth. Wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. And start in that corner and I'm just gonna pull the color. Just pull it. Okay, so that's how we did our shading on our little sign. And that needs to dry some more so we can do our shading on there. We're going to do a little bit of shading in, on the word fresh. Be really careful when you take these words off your tape. Because you don't want to. You don't want to break them. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the bottom of the word fresh because usually the top is where the light hits at first and then the bottom is your shadow. I'm not an expert at all, but that's just kind of my way of thinking. So again, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that brown paint and wipe it, wipe it. And then I'm just going to kind of follow the letters just, just on the bottom. There. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we just shaded just the bottom, just giving it just a little bit of a shadow. And let's let's zap that with the heat tool. Actually, we can color our bee. Let's color our bee. It's dry. The wing. Because I need to do two coats on that wing. Look how sweet he is, just really cute. And you could just leave him like that, but I'm actually gonna do a little bit of highlighting on his wings, but you can leave him like that if that's how you like him. Let's try this a little. Okay, that's all it needed. And we're ready to shade that. We're going to do a little bit of highlighting on, on the top, the top of the word fresh. So I'm going to go into the, the ivory color and I'll do the same thing, just kind of just swipe it. a little bit of water on that. Okay, so I'm just going to brush along the top of each letter. A little bit on that H too. Okay, so if you can see the shading and highlighting on there, just a little bit. It just adds a little bit of nice, nice um, dimension. We're gonna just give a little bit of shadow to our door, or not a shadow, a highlight. When you do light, that's a highlight. When you do dark, that's a shadow. At least, like I said, I'm not an expert, but that's how I do it. Okay. A little bit on there. And now let's do a little bit. Splashing around with my water. We're going to do some. Make some shadows on our beehive. 
And this is actually just a really quick and easy project. Um, I need to blend that a little bit more. If it looks too thick, just go back and blend it a little bit more. If it looks like you have too much paint, blend it a little bit more. But it's a quick and easy project. If I wasn't talking so much and showing you different things, you could see how quick it could go. When you run out of water, that's when I pick up a little bit more water, tap it, and then come back. There's a lot of water on there. Okay, and I'm going to even go around that little doorway where the door is going to sit. And I'm just following these little scored lines that are on here. That's all I'm doing. Okay, now we just want to do the lines just to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm just doing just quick swipes. Just on that line. So we'll do a little bit above and we will do some below. And don't worry about coming in the doorway because that is going to be covered by our, our cute little door. Okay, we'll turn it around and then we'll come back the other way. Rinse it, tap off some of that water. And I'm actually going to go around um, the doorway a little bit just so it's not that stark white. Just with a little bit of that brown. You could leave it like that if you want, but I'm just going to add a little bit so it's not so bright. There. Okay, let's come back. Do the opposite side of the lines where we just went. Whoops, there was water on my brush that dropped down to my paint while I went to pick up some paint. Okay, here we go. There is our beehive. It's finished. Okay, we're going to just do a little bit of highlighting or a little bit of shadow. I don't know if we're doing highlight or shadow if we go, we go from white to blue. But so I am going to use a little bit of this blue. This is just sky blue. And I just need the tiniest amount because I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on all the other, but I'm just working with a smaller little area. Just blend that out really good. And I'm just following around the outside edge. And then he has the little line on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and this brush looks like it's been through a battle. Oh, it's not my best brush, but we're using it.
Okay. There, our bee has little teeny blue highlights around his wings. The last thing, the bee needs a teeny little eye. So I'm just gonna use my little stylus here. It has um, little two balls at the end and I'm just gonna use the very smallest one and dip in the white paint and then just barely touch the wood. There. So sweet. Okay, now it's time to put all of this together. Let's glue, glue, glue. We're going to add a little bit of glue to our honeycomb piece. Take my door and just line it up where those lines are. Whoop, the glue is stuck to my finger. Okay, tap off some of that excess. Just decide whatever angle you want it to be. And kind of think about where you want your B. Oh, you know what? This bee is flying that way. He needs two eyes. He's not a half bee. I do have some that are half bee, like this. This is a half bee. And so he just needs one eye. But this guy needs two. Okay. Now he has two eyes. He has two eyes now. Okay, I'll be, be have to be careful because those little dots are still a bit wet. So just kind of think of where you want to put your little bee on here. And then see where you would like to fill in. Oh, you know, I want to put a little bit of highlight on the bee's body with the brown. I'm just going to put it over just on those little outside edges. I'm not even sure if you can tell. I'm not even sure if you can tell. If you'd look on the yellow part of the bee's body, that's where I went, just stroked it along there and I didn't worry about the black, going over the black. Okay, so our little bee, now that he is, he really is finished. Decide where you want to put him. I think he's just going to go right there. So I'm just going to put just a dot of glue where I want to fill in some of those little holes. And I think I'll do this one too. So this is where you'll take your little teeny pieces. Now you're just doing the puzzle. You're just working them in. And that's why you don't need to worry about the edges being paint on the edges. It doesn't show. Totally fine. Okay, let's see if we want to do. I think that, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. What do you think? Looks cute. Okay, so now we need to add our words. Our fresh honey. Words. So I'm going to turn them upside down. And just touch them with just a little bit of glue. And 
and this is stick fast glue which is it's the thick you can't tell what it is but this is what the front looks like it's stick fast and it's thick this is my favorite but it is a super glue so you can you can glue your fingers together. Okay, so now that I have a little bit of glue, I just tap it just really quickly on my paper towel, just so when I put it on here, it doesn't squish out. Oh, got the letters sticking to me a little bit. And then so just put it where where those little letters are on here. I have a little bit of glue on my finger so it wants to stick to me. Okay, here's the word honey. Now we'll do the work fresh. I'm getting at the end of this bottle of glue, so it takes a second to come out. So same thing, I just tap just gently on the paper towel just to get rid of some of that. Just some of that, that if you got it kind of thick in areas, that really helps. So again, you can see the little score lines, and I've made the score lines a little bit smaller than the actual word. So then if you're just a little bit off, you shouldn't see any of the lines. Okay, so this is our fresh honey. Whoops. Oh, I didn't glue my bee on, did I? I'm like, my bee fell off, but he has no glue on him. So we got to make sure to put a little glue. His eyes should be dry, so we should be okay. Pop him on right there. Okay. Now my bee is going to stay. Here is our fresh honey. So that's what I'm going to finish up with right now. I am going to come back and do another live so I can show you how to make the tassel. And remember the tassel to our garland. I'm going to clean up this mess too because it just kind of gets all over the place. So this is the tassel and I have a tassel maker tool that's available as an SVG in the shop. So if you would like to um, use that tool to make your tassel, I'm going to show you how to use that when I come back and go live again. So anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we're going to come back and finish this project off. But in the meantime, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.